Alhamdulillah. I prefer personally people don't stand, so I just like people not to stand if I come in the room. Um, Shaykh Abdullah bin Bayya, um, definitely I think it's a good thing. I'm sure he doesn't like it, but in spite of that, there's a story of one of the ulama in Andrusia. He came in and, and everybody stood up and uh, he said, um, you know, you were prohibited from doing that. And one of the ulama that was there, he's famous Andrusian alim. Um, he said, no, the, that's, we're not prohibited. You know, the prohibition is that you want us to do that. So it's actually in your heart is where the prohibition lies. The Prophet ﷺ, he liked a very simple, no protocol. His gatherings were very simple uh, gatherings. They couldn't tell who he was between his sahaba. Like the, he would not have had this type environment. Because if you come in, like if somebody came in now, they would know immediately who's, who was teaching. who was. But in his majlis, he, he sat at the same level they sat at, and he spoke in, in, in the circle. And so when people came in that didn't know him, they couldn't recognize him from amongst the other Sahaba, which is an amazing testimony to, to his humility. He said, Umirtu ana tawadha hatta la yafkhara ahadun ala ahad. I was commanded to be humble so that no one would show contempt for anyone else. You know, nobody would feel better than anybody else because if he was commanded to be humble, then where does that put everybody else? So he said, I was commanded to be humble. And tawadr, you know, wada'a means to put something down, like wada'atuhu ala al-ard. I put it, like if, if I say wada'atuhu. The word wada' also means to give birth, you know, because the child falls. In fact, they call it masqat ras because in most Pre-modern societies, women did not give birth on their backs. They gave birth squatting. And so when the child came, the head hit the earth. And so they, literally the Arabs call where you were born the place your head hit. Masqat ra'sihi. Because that's how... And they still do that. In some cultures, the women actually squat. They don't go on the back. Because it's easier to, to do the, uh, the pushing than it is when you're on your back with the epidurum and all that other stuff. <laughs> so uh, the Prophet him, that's what he said. You know, he was commanded to be humble. And then one of the things that Imam al-Ghazali says about humility, he says that, awwal at-tawadu' at The beginning of humility is to force yourself. You know, because people were very egocentric humans. Our lives revolve around ourselves. It's a major problem. In fact, it's probably the single most significant problem on the planet is egocentricity. You know, the nafs, nafsi nafsi. And one of the things that this religion teaches people is ethar, to actually begin to prefer other people. And the reason for that is because yom al it's all nafsi nafsi. And the only people that that are saved are the people that had the ethar in this world, Allah gives them the ethar in the next world. And it's very difficult to get out of egocentricity. Just that you are the sun and everything else in the world is revolving around you. That's the child's reality, which is why children, when they don't get something, they scream. Because to them, that's the only thing that matters at that moment is their nafs. And really, this is very related to the talk because in our tradition, the place of the science of tasawwuf is really rooted in overcoming the self. You know, gharabatun nafs. That's, that's the root of uh, the science. And, and it's a Quranic science. Because the Qur'an clearly delineates the different types of nafs. Nafs al-Ammara, nafs al-Lawwama, nafs al-Mutma'inna. These are Qur'anic terms. Nafs al-Ammara is the, the egocentric commanding self. It's the soul that it just 
It commands and impels one to things that are not good for it, which is why people constantly do things that are bad for them. They smoke even though they know smoking's bad. They don't exercise even though they know exercise is good because the nafs is lazy. They don't uh, eat right because they eat things that the nafs inclines toward. So if they're given a choice for dessert between the cheesecake and the fruit, they choose the cheesecake. It, because that's what the nafs inclines towards. It's the nature of the nafs. Is it likes things that are are maladhat, you know, the things of ladha, the things that there's some type of delight in it. But what's interesting is the things that are beneficial for the self are often bitter. And that's why the Prophet said that he said, حُفَّةَ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِهِ Paradise was surrounded by distasteful things. And hell was surrounded by delightful things. Things that we incline towards. And this is one of the paradoxes of the world. It's a paradox. And one of the other interesting aspects of the world is those things that are very difficult for you in the world, they're things that you get the greatest satisfaction when you do them. The real challenges in life it's not going the easy route. It's going the harder route where you get that personal satisfaction that you've accomplished something.